Hey everybody, this is Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff, and no, I have not forgotten about the iPhone 5S experiment. This is the last update video that I'm going to make, talking about my experiences before I create the full review, which I've actually started filming. So what the deal was is I promised I would not touch an Android phone for an entire week, and I would only use the iPhone 5S as my primary phone. I did that. I did not fail this challenge. I decided that this is a little phone that I will like to keep in my pocket with me. It's my little pocket friend or my backup phone, really. So after my week of using this, I said I was going to be getting the Galaxy Note 3 and I was going to use them concurrently side by side to really see how the experience went. And that's something that's going to be a part of my full review. So there are two big things that I have noticed lately with this phone. One thing is that Yes, it's a little weird that Apple keeps continuing on with the 5, 5S, 4, 4S, all of that, and they end up not changing the design of the phone at all, except for the fingerprint reader home button here. But one nice thing about this is that all your accessories from your previous iPhone will work with the new iPhone. And so I went to the store today and had a complete nerd out moment and found this Survivor Case Batman Justice League of America series. I was totally ecstatic about it, but then I realized, oh yeah, this thing has a fingerprint reader and now I can't use it. I've actually really used this fingerprint reader. I think it has enhanced the experience as I have mentioned before. So that's one thing to think about when you get an iPhone 5S versus the iPhone 5. If you want to have a very protective case, you have to pay attention to the fact that the home button may be covered up. I know that OtterBox came out with a solution that works so that you can use the fingerprint reader as well. But oh well, this is still a really awesome protective case. I am not going to let it go but I am jeopardizing being able to use one of the obvious updates of this phone. One other thing that I want to talk about is actually the display. It is the exact same display that we had on the iPhone 5, and that has frustrated a lot of people. A lot of people were hoping that Apple would boost the size of the display, especially when you consider phones like the Galaxy Note 3 with a 5.7 inch display versus four inches. But there are a lot of people who think this is a sweet spot and don't wanna see it change at all. Now, while this is too small for me, four inches is a little bit difficult when watching content like on Netflix. I do wish to have a bigger display, but at least games that are full screen like Infinity Blade 3. I haven't felt insulted by the lack of screen real estate. Actually, the four inch display is bearable with full screen games. Another thing that's a joy about Apple and what they do with their displays is that they're not one of those companies who has to match AMOLED. They don't care what Samsung does. What I like is that they don't do crazy things with the calibration. They're not making shadows darker than they're supposed to be to try to give it an effect. They're not oversaturating the colors. They're not messing around with the gamma to try to make certain things pop, like make certain colors brighter in one area and other colors very dark in another area. No, Apple tries to leave it as a properly calibrated display. So yes, this is a very small display, but watching media content, if you don't mind the size of the display, is pretty ideal, and I thank Apple for that. They're the only company that I know of that's not doing these crazy things with the calibration. So still the exact same display of the iPhone 5. It's not considered HD at all, but the calibration is not bad. And if you're somebody who's very bothered by garish, terrible looking oversaturated colors, or not exactly happy with what's going on in terms of calibration, at least Apple tries. So for me, it's been a good experience. I will definitely be getting to that full review. That should be up sometime soon. I am a primary Android user, but my iPhone 5S isn't going anywhere. I think it's a very solid little media player, and at the end of the day, sometimes having a smaller phone is pretty nice. 